who were more interested about what is the difference between this bootstrap and cross validation because both of these are being used to validate your model. Generally speaking, if you go back to the origin, uh, cross validation is more popular for a model vari validation where you are just testing your model in different parts of the data. And it, it is very useful tool to get the test sample error estimates, like what is happening when you are not using the data that was used to build the model to get the prediction out of it, right? Bootstrap originally was developed as a method for variance estimation where closed form or the formula for variance derivation was very hard and we needed to do some bootstrap to get an estimate of the standard error, right? Later, we figured out that Bootstrap has something very similar to the cross validation. Similar to cross validation where, where we are splitting our sample to the test sample and the training sample. In the bootstrap as well, we have some samples that are being selected in the in a particular bootstrap sample, and some of the some of the samples are not being selected. So we call them out of bag, out of bootstrap sample, right? And then we can use those out of bootstrap samples to act very similar to the cross validation and we can test these uh, test sample errors or estimate these test sample errors uh, using this bootstrap. But sometimes this out of bag or out of bootstrap approach gives you some biased estimates and that's why we are talking about this 0.632 and 0.632 plus estimates. Uh, but if you are asking a general strategy like is there a preferred strategy? The preferred strategy would be the cross validation strategy, right? All right. So, again, because this is so popular and this is used in so many different fields, people use different versions of cross validation. So, even in your textbook, you will see it talks about so I have this entire sample and then I split it into the training sample, test sample, and validation sample. Sometimes people do not have that validation sample at all. They just split it into training sample and test sample, right? Uh, so it, it kind of matters what type of cross validation you are using because if you are using a cross validation without the validation sample, you are maybe still subjecting yourself to some bias. Like you are not getting the proper picture if you are not using a like completely uh, external valid, like completely uh, different samples compared to the uh, samples that you have used to produce your model. Does that answer the question? Who is, who is part of Dark Orchid? Yeah. 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 All right, so the function of internal validation and the function of external validation is somewhat different. The, Internal validation is more about developing the model and external validation is more about like whether you can reproduce the same test errors that you got in your in, uh, in your internal validation um, and external validation could mean different things it could mean new year's data or uh, data from different cycles or data from another country maybe uh, and, and that if you are trying to make a generalization about the entire world that for generalization purposes external validation is extremely extremely important if you are not making generalization maybe that then if you are just focusing on this one specific data source that does not change over time, then maybe external validation is not that important. But usually that's not the case when we are trying to make a generalization about a treatment and we are trying to get that approved in, say for example, UK, but we have only tested that in Canada, maybe that's not generalizable in, generalizable in UK. So in UK, we would need to run an external validation to see whether that works also in UK. Uh, 